Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A 4x4 pickup from Nissan, the Navarre Pro 4X, and a subcompact sedan from Suzuki, the Desire GL Plus AGS. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two hatchbacks, the Kia Picanto 1.2 EX Automatic versus the Toyota Wigo TRD S Automatic. On Autopedia, we'll talk checking an engine light, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the 2021 Jaguar XF and F-Pace as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! Live Extra with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Nissan. The 4x4 pickup war just keeps getting hotter and hotter. Nissan stoked the fire with the introduction of the Navara Pro 4X 4x4. Cargo checks out this new combatant in the pickup wars. Nissan has just rolled out the Navarre Pro 4X 4x4, now the flag bearer of its local mid-size pickup lineup. The latest iteration of the Navarre is both muscular and modern, with large grille, chiseled bumper and fenders, and sizable cargo bed. The Navarre takes up a space that's 5,260mm long, 1,875mm wide, and 1,855mm at its highest point. The brochure doesn't say anything about the minimum ground clearance of the Navara Pro 4X, but it does say that the maximum water weighting for the pickup is 600 millimeters. The Pro 4X shares with some of its siblings the quad LED projector headlamps, LED daylight running lights, fog lamps and tail lights, the rain wipers, sidestep, high mount stop lamp, front and rear mudguard, as well as a utility track channel to help in securing various items. One can tell the Pro 4X from the other Navara variants by its dark colored front grille with the black and orange Nissan logo, the body colored front bumper with orange accents, the black tailgate assist, black window molding, and the gloss black roof rails. Nissan has equipped the Navara Pro 4X 4x4 with much of the latest and standard comfort and convenience not expected in top end pickups. 
You've got keyless entry system with Nissan's intelligence key function. Push button engine start stop system. Power windows and door locks. Dual climate control system with rear vents. You've got what Nissan calls the zero gravity type for high tech comfort, but on the Pro 4X it only comes with manual slide recline and height adjustment. The seats are upholstered in leather with Pro 4X stitching. The leather matches the armrest and door trips. You've got a center console with armrest and a center upper tray. Driver and passenger won't lack for cup and bottle holders. There is a 12 volt socket and USB port for devices and gadgets. The meter cluster features the 7 inch color TFT display. The Navarre Pro 4X offers entertainment and connectivity using the Nissan 8 inch advanced touchscreen display audio unit that comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth for hands free call and audio streaming, radio tune, and six speakers. Cool thing to have on the road on long drives or in traffic. Another cool thing about driving the Pro 4X is what Nissan calls the zero gravity front seats for driver and front seat passenger. The seat has been designed to provide generous support and help reduce fatigue, especially on long drives. The leather wrapped steering wheel tilts but does not telescope, but it comes with controls for audio, hands free phone, cruise control, and multi information display screen and voice recognition. The Navarre is a pickup truck using a fully boxed ladder frame chassis designed for strength and to resist twisting, especially when carrying heavy loads or on rough roads and trails. Nissan has fitted the Navarro with independent double wishbones with coil spring and stabilizer in front and a 5-link system with dual rate coil spring and stabilizer bar in the rear, all to provide a pickup truck that will provide a comfortable ride and handling as can be possible on a utility vehicle running on paved surfaces as well as toughness and reliability on unpaved roads. The Pro 4X is meant to be Navarro's entry into the territory occupied by the Range Raptor and other supposedly off-road ready 4x4 mid-size pickups available locally. As it is, the Pro 4X is powered by a 2488cc diesel engine with variable turbocharger and intercooler capable of generating 190 PS at 3600 RPM and 450 Nm of torque at 2000 RPM. The engine is mated to a 7-speed automatic transmission with manual mode and a part-time 4-wheel drive system with shift on the fly capability for shifting from 2H, 4H, and 4L mode. The drive system also comes with electronic locking ear differential. Nissan calls its suite of driver assist tech and system the Nissan Intelligent Mobility, and the Navarre Pro 4X gets the full treatment as it comes with intelligent emergency braking, driver attention alert, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, high beam assist, hill start assist, and hill descent control. It also features a round view monitor plus off road monitor. The latter activates at slow speeds in four wheel mode, giving driver a clear view of the surrounding terrain, very useful when on off road trails. Nissan also did a scrimp on providing the Navarre Pro 4 X 4x4 with all the safety tech and gear. Aside from the standard stuff like SRS airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for 5, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, speed testing door locks in isofix and teether anchors, the Pro 4 X also has vehicle dynamic control with trailer stability assist, and 4-wheel active brake limited slip which automatically directs power to the wheels with the best traction. The Navarro also comes with anti-theft system with alarm and engine immobilizer. Looking at the specs alone, the Navarro Pro 4X seems to have the edge over the competition at this point in time. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break.
humans choose more challenging paths to go up and over our biggest obstacle, ourselves. New Ford Ranger FX4 Max. Live the Ranger life. Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. The popular, smart, and practical subcompact sedan from Mitsubishi has just gotten an attitude. The new Mirage G4 that Mitsubishi rolled out recently looks meaner now that it sports the dynamic shield fascia. The new headlight and front grille design make the new G4 more aggressive, a look complemented by the cut of the 15-inch alloy wheels. The new G4 is powered by Mitsubishi's 1.2-liter Mivec engine made it to either a manual transmission for the base model or an Invex 3CVT transmission. The top-of-the-line G4 GLS CVT now features some of the latest safety and comfort and convenience features now seen in most top-end automobiles. These include keyless operation system, push start button, auto climate control, ABS, EBD, reverse camera, fog lamps. It also comes with 7-inch smartphone link display audio touchscreen, multimedia system compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Mirage G4 has been one of Mitsubishi Motors Philippines' top-selling nameplates, with more than 92,000 units sold since its local debut in 2013. Mitsubishi expects the meaner-looking Mirage G4 to continue this trend. Prices start at 769,000 pesos for the Mirage G4 GLX manual to 819,000 pesos for the GLX CVT and 899,000 pesos for the GLS CVT. The 6th generation Outback now built on the Subaru Global platform has finally reached local shores. Motor Image Pilipinas, exclusive distributor of Subaru vehicles in the Philippines, says the Outback has been restyled inside and out and fitted with the latest and most sophisticated driver assist technologies. This includes EyeSight 4.0 that comes with autonomous emergency steering, adaptive cruise control system with a lane centering function, lane departure warning with lane departure prevention, and better stereo cameras to provide almost double the angle of coverage. The new Outback also features a more sophisticated infotainment system and an innovative driver monitoring system. According to Motor Images' Glenn Tan, the new Outback has the latest best-in-class safety features and spaciousness usually found in luxury European brands. It is stable, versatile, and practical, with a touch of luxury, a well-equipped high-end car without high-end price tag. The Outback comes with a full inner frame structure and symmetrical all-wheel drive and is powered by an all-new 2.5-liter direct-injection boxer engine which generates 188 PS and 245 Nm of torque, enabling the car to go from 0 to 100 in 9.6 seconds. The all-new Outback comes with a retail price of 2.38 million pesos, but those who reserve a unit on or before September 30, 2021 will get a 50,000 peso discount. The Association of Vehicle Importers and Distributors, Inc. reports that members sold a total of 4,862 units in July this year, a 5% decrease from the 5,101 units sold in the same month last year. This is also a 2% drop from the 4,961 sales recorded in June. Despite the slowdown in July sales, AVID reports that members sold 35,092 vehicles in the first seven months of 2021, a 43% increase compared to the 24,610 units sold in the same period last year. The rise is driven by sales of light commercial vehicles, which made up of 72% of total industry sales during the first seven months of the year. LCV sales surged by 52% in the first seven months from 16,561 units in 2020 to 25,127 units sold in the same period this year. Sales in the commercial vehicle segment rose 448% in the periods compared. Avid's head sales in the passenger car segment experienced a year-on-year -year drop of 27% and a month-on-month -month decline of 5%. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it 
get his superpower. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Every time I'm on the road, I can expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven seater in style. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our feature to feature comparison of the latest automobile models, belong to the same category on head to head. With the way things are going in the global COVID-19 pandemic, we can expect lockdowns and transport restrictions to continue for much longer. Meanwhile, more and more people are looking to acquire small affordable vehicles for personal transport. Head to Head takes a look at two affordable mini hatchbacks that could answer this need. Mini hatchbacks are good practical daily drivers. They are perfect for daily use in congested urban streets. Easy to park, easy on fuel consumption costs, easy to maintain. They can also be nimble and fun to drive. Two prime examples of mini hatchbacks are the Kia Picanto 1.2 EX Automatic and the Toyota Wego TRD S Automatic. The Kia Picanto 1.2 EX Automatic is 3,595mm long, 1,595mm wide, and 1,495mm tall, with a ground clearance of 151mm. This Picanto comes with multi-reflector halogen headlamps, front fog lamps, body color front and rear bumpers, intermittent front windshield wipers, mesh type grille with silver trim, hole type antenna, rear window defogger, rear spoiler with integrated high mount stop lamp, standard rear combination lamp, and 14 inch alloy rims wrapped by 175-65 R14 tires. The Toyota Wego 1.0 TRD US Automatic is 3,700 mm long. 1,600 mm wide and 1,520 mm tall, with a minimum ground clearance of 180 mm. It comes with TRD design front spoiler, side skirt, rear skirt, two tone rear spoilers, TRD SD call and badge, and 14 inch machine cut design alloy wheels. The exterior also features projector type headlamps, line guide type clearance lamp, front fog lamps, rear combination lamps with LED brake lamps, high mount LED stop lamp integrated into the rear spoiler and side mirrors with integrated turn signal lights and power adjust and retract function. The Kia Picanto has your roomy cabin to comfortably accommodate 5 adults in fabric upholstered seats. The front and driver's seat slides and reclines. The rear bench seat for 3 splits and folds 60-40. The dash features silver trim, an instrument cluster with analog speedometer, tachometer, fuel gauge and 2.6 inch LCD screen for the tip meter. A 3-spoke polyurethane steering wheel that tilts and comes with controls for audio and Bluetooth function. The Picanto is also equipped with remote keyless entry, power windows and door locks, a large glove box, a console box, power outlet, and air conditioning. The key infotainment system comes with a 7-inch touchscreen, AM FM radio, MP3 with USB and AUX imports, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto with voice control, and 4 speakers plus 2 tweeters. The Wego also has a spacious interior that can accommodate 5 adults comfortably. The TRD S variant comes with, among other standard features, keyless entry and push button start, power windows and door locks, air conditioning with LCD control panel, three spoke steering wheel with controls for audio. 
Then we go infotainment system, feature safe touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, MFM radio, auxiliary and USB ports, as well as Bluetooth and voice command function. The Picanto is powered by a 1,248cc four-cylinder gasoline engine with multi-point injection made into a four-speed automatic transmission that drives the front wheels. The engine generates 84 PS at 6,000 RPM and 122 Nm of torque at 4,000 RPM. The suspension system uses front McPherson struts with stabilizer and coupled torsion beam axle in the rear. The brakes feature front disc and rear drums. The Wego is powered by a 998cc 3-cylinder 12-valve engine with double overhead cam and VVTi that generates 66 PS at 6,000 RPM and 89 Nm of torque at 4,400 RPM. It sends all the power and torque to the front wheels via a 4-speed automatic transmission. Its suspension features McPherson struts in the front and torsion beam axle in the rear while the brake system uses front ventilated disc and rear drums. He has equipped the Picanto with standard safety features that include dual airbags, heat belts for 5, child seat anchor, child lock, and anti-lock brake system. The top of the line Picanto also comes with rear camera with static guidelines and an anti-theft system with engine immobilizer. Toyota has equipped the Wego with dual airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts, ABS, and a back camera and rear sonar for easier parking. The Wego TRD also comes with an anti-theft system, immobilizer, and alarm. There are features found in the Picanto that are not on the Wego, and vice versa. So brand aside, what combination of features would you rather have in a mini hatchback? Isuzu D-Max into new heights. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrator Restaurant, only for the foodies. Be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has anti-oxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Jaguar has brought the 2021 XF and the F-Pace to local shores. This special feature covers the unveiling of the Jaguar's remaining sedan and its electrified SUV.
Back in 2019, Chris Ward, president of Coventry Motors Corporation, official importer and distributor of Jaguar cars in the country, sounded out local motoring journos about the British maker of premium sports cars and SUVs possibly bringing in more electrified models. It's now 2021 and Coventry Motors has brought in two new Jaguars, the 2021 model year XF sedan and the 2021 model year F-Pace SUV with mild hybrid electric vehicle technology. Chris Ward, also general manager of All British Cars, the dealership for Jaguar Land Rover vehicles, invited motoring journals to another powwow to announce the arrival of two new additions to its local Jaguar lineup. Yes, this afternoon we've been uh, introducing the new 21 model year Jaguar XF and Jaguar F-Pace um, to our media colleagues. As we've gone through quite an update on the car for 21 model year, made a number of exterior styling changes, brought the car up to date, um, but more importantly, we've totally redefined the interior of the car. Um, we're using new, much more premium materials. Um, we've introduced a much larger infotainment screen, new technology, noise cancelling, even technology inside the car now. So a thorough kind of update just to make sure the car is competing um, with the very best, but also giving our clients something new, something exciting. So. Um, all new XF and all new F-Pace. The XF is one of the last, if not the last, executive sedans. In the lineup of Jaguar, which, like many global car makers, are shifting concentration towards crossovers and SUVs. The 2021 Jaguar XF comes with new front and rear bumper designs, new grille, and super slim all-LED quad headlights with double daytime running lights. The new designs all make the XF look wider and lower to the ground, and therefore more sporty. Quite noticeable is the incorporation of the Leaper into the overall design, like on the grille treatment and the side venter vents. The XF features an all-new interior with heightened luxury, enhanced connectivity, and greater serenity and refinement. It comes with a new 12.3-inch HD interactive driver display and a center console with centrally mounted 11.4-inch curved glass HD touchscreen for the new PV Pro infotainment system. Available locally is a Jaguar XF powered by the latest 250 horsepower Ingenium petrol engine made into an 8-speed automatic transmission that can take the XF from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds. The XF also features a segment-first active road noise cancellation technology that monitors vibrations from the road surface and calculates the opposite phase sound wave needed to remove the noise heard in the cabin. The new F-Pace also comes with enhanced exterior design concept exhibited by the XF as well as an all-new interior, advanced connectivity and an efficient electrified powertrain. The F-Pace Performance SUV features a new sculpted bonnet with a wider power bulge, an enlarged grille with diamond detailing, a bumper with redesigned air intakes and dark mesh details, and Jaguar's double chicane graphic first seen on the all-electric I-Pace. The new refined F-Pace interior is highlighted by the centrally mounted 11.4-inch curved glass HD touchscreen for the new PV Pro infotainment system, the wood veneer and aluminum trims and accents, the HD interactive driver display, and the metallic rotary dial of the Jaguar Drive Control. The new F-Pace arrives with the latest four-cylinder inline diesel mild hybrid electric vehicle Ingenium engine, intelligent all-wheel drive, and eight-speed automatic transmission. It is also equipped with Jaguar's latest 3D surround camera technology that delivers advanced 3D functionality. Jaguar has a standing invitation for people to come visit the All-British Cars showroom in BGC and Greenhills to check out the XF and the F-Pace. So the very best way for uh, clients to come and understand just what we've done um, and how amazing these new cars are is please um, invite you to come to the showroom either at BGC or at Green Hills. Come and get up close to the cars because that's really where you begin to appreciate just what a Jaguar is. What's different about a Jaguar, how it feels and more importantly how it drives. Come and understand why we have a strap line of the art of performance. They really are beautiful cars to drive. So come and see us. <laughs> Now that it has brought in the F-Pace, its award-winning mild hybrid electric SUV, some may be waiting for Jaguar to finally bring in plug-in hybrids and all battery-powered models.
be part of the 2021-2022 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2021, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2021-2022 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate, standard, and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2021. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Da, da, da. Make long distance easy with the Mirage G4. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. The battle for sales is fierce in the lower subcompact sedan segment. Car review checks out one of the challengers in this segment, the 2021 Suzuki Desire GL Plus AGS. When the Suzuki Desire first arrived in the country, it was marketed as the sedan version of the Swift hatchback. That was then. These days, the subcompact has dropped the Swift tag and is just known as the Desire. Which is all well and good as the new revamped exterior gives the Desire its own distinct identity and roof line. The 2021 Suzuki Desire GL Plus takes up a smallish footprint on the road. 3,995mm long, 1,735 millimeters wide and 1,515 millimeters tall. But it comes with a 2,450 millimeters long wheelbase and clears the ground by 145 millimeters. The Desire GL Plus exterior is striking with a new body colored bumper design that frames the black grille with chrome garnish, a large Suzuki emblem, and the front fog lamp. The halogen multi reflector headlamps also look striking and functional. Not as striking are the 15-inch alloy wheels strapped by 18565R15 tires. Standard exterior features in the Desire GL include body-colored outside door mirrors with integrated turn signals that power adjust and fold, intermittent windshield wipers with washer, and front and rear mud flaps. For an entry-level subcompact sedan, the Desire GL comes with a decent amount of interior and comfort and convenience features. It's got remote entry into a relatively roomy interior for a four-door, five-passenger sedan with a smallish footprint. The fabric seats look and feel contemporary and comfortable. The front seats slide and recline with driver also benefiting from a height adjuster. Rear seat passengers can enjoy benefits of the fold-down center armrest with cup holders. The Desire GL also has the standard power amenities, windows, door locks, steering. The dash and instrument panel look contemporary and quite functional with everything from speedometer and tachometer to displays for clock, outside temperature, fuel consumption, driving range. The tiltable three-spoke urethane steering wheel comes with controls for audio and hands-free phone. It's got air conditioning with heater and pollen filter as well as rear vents. The desired GL interior also meets many of the needs of modern living and motoring. These include front and rear door pockets, front console box with cup holders, glove box and 12 volt accessory sockets. For storage of bigger items, there's a trunk that has 378 liters of usable space. The GL Plus comes with a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment audio unit with AM FM radio, USB and Bluetooth connectivity, micro SD card slot for audio and video files, GPS navigation, aux in and front and rear speakers. The Desire is powered by a K12M inline 4 gasoline engine with multi point fuel injection that generates 82 PS at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 113 Nm of torque at 4,200 RPM. In the Desire Plus, the engine is submitted to Suzuki's AGS or Auto Gearshift system, which is also known as the Automatic Manual Transmission. 
According to Suzuki, the AGS is basically a manual transmission without need for a clutch pedal for the driver. Electric motors operate the clutch system during gear shifts which are mainly determined by engine RPM. In full automatic mode, one can drive the desired GL Plus like one drives a vehicle with more conventional automatic transmission while still benefiting from the fuel economy of manual transmissions. In manual mode, one can also control gear shifts on the desired GL Plus like driving, toggling up or down the gears using the stick shift. The Desire Ride and Hamley can compare favorably with other entry-level compact sedans. The suspension features McPherson struts with coil springs in front and torsion beam with coil springs in the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs in the front wheels and leading and trailing drums in the rear. The Desire GL Plus also comes with driver assist and safety systems. The 2021 Desire GL now comes with an electronic stability program which helps the driver keep control of the vehicle on the verge of a skid. Still standard in the Desire GL are anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, and rear parking sensors. Other standard safety and security features in Desire are dual airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts, and 2-point lap belt for one, 2 isofix child seat anchors and child seat teether anchorages, child-proof rear door locks, side impact door beams, engine immobilizer, high mount stop lamp. The Suzuki Desire GL Plus is listed at 708,000 pesos. If you like to experience Suzuki's auto gear shift, try booking a test drive. Maybe the experience can convince you to take one home. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're gonna talk about the dreaded check engine light. What it is, what it means, and why you should not freak out. So you're driving normally, minding your own business, and then suddenly, BAM! The yellow light of death comes out, the dreaded check engine light. You start freaking out, don't know what to do. You start the car, you stop the car, you turn it on, and it's still there. Oh no, it's the end of the world, something's wrong with my car, my engine is busted. Relax. It's none of those things. Quite simply put, a check engine light simply means that one of the various sensors in the engine senses that something is wrong or is reading wrong. Almost all the sensors in the car measure voltage, is in electricity. It reads anywhere from 0 to 5 volts, and if that sensor is calibrated to read, say, only from 1.5 to 4 volts, then for some unknown reason, it becomes 4.1 volts, then the check engine light will come out. That's all it means. One of the sensors reads something wrong. Now, whether it reads something wrong because of a glitch or temporary condition, or because the sensor is failing, that you will have to find out. And no, you cannot find it out by going on Facebook. You cannot find out going on the internet asking, may check engine ako, ano yung problema? You ask 10 different people, you will get 100 different answers. And none of them will be correct. Especially the people say, oh, nagkaroon na po niyan, ito yung problema niyan. No, they are wrong. Do not believe them. Because there are 999 possibilities why that light comes out. The only way for you to find out what that means is if you either, one, have a scanner like this, or you bring it to the casa or the dealership and you have a bigger scanner like this. So now we'll show you what happens when you actually do bring your car in for scanning. First we'll take the regular shop grade scanner that we have here. This reads pretty fast. All scanners will actually have this port. It's a trapezoidal port. It's called an OBD port or onboard diagnostic port. Every car has this port and it's always, always located somewhere here. It's standard that all car manufacturers agree to. So this will work for any car. This will tell you what the check engine means. There's always an error code with, that starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. You can actually type that into Google and then it will pretty much tell you what it means. So for this Honda City, we actually have a check engine and we're gonna plug this in right now. So we have it plugged in. It's actually here on the corner. We turn the engine on. On, not start. And we wait for it to fire up because it was now going to talk to the engine ECU and pull out the error code and see what it means. This is what we mean by the error code. It starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. On our particular scanner, it actually tells you what component is the problem. So this one here is mass or volume airflow circuit low. 
It might be an intermittent lean condition, it might be an intermittent voltage condition, or it might be that your mass airflow sensor is over 10 years old and is dead and it's dying. At least it narrows it down to any of the 999 possibilities because it could either be mass airflow sensor, misfire, crank sensor, ABS, oxygen sensor 1, oxygen sensor 2, fuel tank evaporator sensor, the list goes on and on and on. So without this, you won't be able to say for certainty what is wrong with the engine or actually what sensor and what component is wrong with the engine without this. The first thing that shaft will do is, oh, that's it? Okay, we just hit the race. So we perform the scan test again, as you can see, the message says no powertrain, trouble codes. There's no more, nine out of 10 times, this will work and check engine is gone. So we unplug the scanner and then that's it. You can go on your merry way. But the bigger question is, will that check engine light return? Possibly yes. Like I said, it's caused by one of the sensors not reading correctly. So why it didn't read correctly, we can only speculate. But the two most common reasons are, one, external factors. It just, something just goes wrong. Electronics do that sometimes. Or it might be a symptom of that that particular sensor is on its way to being dead. So it reads wrong now, it reads fine. In the future, it might read wrong again. If it gets too severe, and if you do the erase procedure and it does not erase, that means that the sensor is busted and it's time for replacement. Now, what causes check engine lights? Oftentimes, you'll read on the internet and the groups, masama lang ismo. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Masama yung gasolina mo. Possibly, yes. Because there is such an engine code called cylinder misfire detected that was caused by bad batch of gas. Whether your 98 octane is not really 98 or may two weeks of gasolina, you don't know. Can it be caused by faulty spark plugs? Yes, it can also. Can it be caused by me not using the car for three years? Possible, because that particular sensor could be busted and rusted. Particularly, let's say, crank shaft position sensors. These things have a magnet inside them. And the engine gets hot, it gets cold, gets hot, gets cold. The magnet eventually becomes less magnetic. That will also cause a check engine. So like I said, you cannot find out for certain without one of these things. Now, actually, if you go to Lazada, you just type OBD scanner, you will find a lot for 400 bucks, 700 bucks, 900 bucks. You can actually just buy one of those and it will work on your car just for you to be able to narrow it down. And if you do bring your car to the shop, make sure that once you scan it, you take a picture of this, show it to the shop, so they won't be punching in the dark and asking a lot of questions and basically guessing why. That will be a big help. And if the check engine light doesn't go away, and then if there's something wrong, you only need one of these things. Professional level vehicle diagnostic scanner. This you cannot buy in Lazada anymore. <laughs>there you have it why you should not freak out if your car suddenly has a check engine light it's not the end of the world so hopefully now you understand a little bit more better on why it happens and how to get rid of it that's our feature on autopedia this week taking care of your ride has been made easier and that's autofocus this week we hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.